joining us now in studio. What a good get by our producer. Every once in a while, Mikey likes to flex a little muscle right. in the building and just bring in some like you know top tier muscle guests. <laughs> this is Mike. We're probably getting hit up for a raise after this. South Carolina superstar <laughs> Senator Tim Scott in studio. Hey man, Jimmy, it's a big deal. It, it is. It's a big deal for me. <laughs> any you, question. You stop it. It's a big deal for me because you saw all the toys in this studio and agreed to come on anyway. Well, listen, I was thinking about. Boba Fett, Boba Fett? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Mandalorian? Yeah, yeah. Uh, are you a fan? A little bit. Okay, uh, right. But this is old school Star Wars. This is I, OG I Star yeah. Wars. Well, see, I, when I was working at movie theater, we talked uh-huh. about Rocky Three yes, all the yes, time. Yes, yes, yes. It was the return of the Jedi. I remember that, the yeah. The greatest of all the Star Wars, in my humble opinion. Hold on. You get in a lot of trouble for making movie declarations <laughs> do, on this indeed. show. We're still embroiled in this Rocky Three controversy. Well, there is some controversy around Rocky One, Rocky mm-hmm. Two, Rocky Three, mm-hmm. but not Rocky Nine. Yeah. <laughs> They're still In the latest one, Rocky's like battling arthritis. They, they, <laughs> they just keep going on. It is. A, it is. It, when you find out what makes you money, you do more of it until the audience doesn't buy it, I, I assume. <laughs> Well, in the in the Return of the Jedi remake, oddly enough, the Jedi doesn't come back because he can't afford gas money. <laughs> well, he's that was the Carter years, and now the yeah, Biden years. They've they've yes. bookended it. There so, are things that seem to repeat itself. History has a way of doing that. That's what they say. So you have a great book we're going to get to in a minute. It's called America: A Redemption Story, yes, choosing sir. hope and creating unity. Which I'm excited to talk to you about. But I wanted to get you on record on some news of the day stuff Absolutely. because we essentially, in passing an Inflation Reduction Act, are basically fighting a spending problem by spending more money. Is that what I'm to believe? Well, you know, uh, I was talking to some friends earlier. I call it the Inflation Seduction Act. <laughs> The Democrats are trying to seduce the American people in believing what they're saying and not what they're seeing. Yeah, yeah. All you have to do is to pull up at a gas station and you know that there has been no reduction in inflation. Mm-hmm. And number two, what caused inflation was overspending. Mm-hmm. So what do you do if you're in charge? Mm-hmm. You spend more. <laughs> it, it is contrary to common sense, but mainstream for the Democrats. Yes. Well, that's what's so crazy is like we're trying – this is the equivalent of trying to drink yourself sober, which I tried in college several times. I love that. Which explains my GPA. I got a 4.0 in college, but it wasn't my GPO. It was at my BAC, you know. (laughs) (laughs) But stick with me. We're talking to South Carolina Senator Tim Scott. And, you know, once the bill passed, you noticed a lot of their allies in the media championing this as a climate bill. And and even Chuck Schumer saying, oh, it's got things in it the American people love. If they loved the contents of this bill so much, why didn't they title it what it was, which was a climate spending bill? And I think we know the answer, right? Exactly, because the American people aren't interested in a conversation about anything other than the economy, inflation, and gas prices. So true. And this bill misses the mark drastically. I can't understand how the Democrats of today— completely miss the reality yeah. of the modern society. Li- literally, I can't figure out what they don't understand about gas prices over $4 a gallon in most of, a lot of this country. Oh, it's bad. Yeah, yeah. I don't understand what they don't understand about going to Walmart or to your grocery store and seeing 14, 15, 20% increase in the cost of feeding your family. Yeah. It's not stunning. Well, it's weird because it speaks to them just not having a connection to the people they purport to care about. Too much time in Washington, not enough time in the rest of the country. There it is. They need to go see Top Gun with Tim Scott. That's there you go. Senator Scott runs a good movie program. I, I, I saw it twice. I, I recommend every American <laughs> see it. Every red-blooded American should see Top Gun. And every red, bro- red brother, red-blooded American uh-huh. should be voting in this upcoming election oh. to kick the Democrats out of office mm-hmm. and restore sanity to the American people. Could you imagine? I, I can't. <laughs> we are, to put it in Top Gun terms, okay, we are on a highway to the danger zone. <laughs> if, I can hear the music. <laughs> if you're, listen, if you're hiring 87,000 IRS agents. That's a bad and, thing. But you're telling me you're not going to increase audits. I mean, imagine me telling my dad. That's a dumb thing. I bought 87,000 red solo cups, but I'm not having a keg party. Exactly. And Come think on. about it this way, Jimmy. If, the size of the IRS mm-hmm. just increased by 600%. That's madness. It is now going to be larger than the FBI, the Pentagon, Border Patrol, and the State Department combined. That's bananas. And according to the CBO, mm-hmm. the Congressional Budget Office, mm-hmm. 90% of the targeting will be under $200,000, middle America, low-income Americans, and small business owners. That is nuts. 
Stunning. And, and that is not making the rich pay their fair share. Well, th- th- there's no goal within this administration mm-hmm. of, of targeting the rich. Yeah. They're targeting the middle class because that's where the money is. Well, it's a, good, it's a good point you make because we're talking to South Carolina Senator Jim Scott. When I see that there's a subsidy in there for people earning over $300,000 a year, right. that does not strike me as fighting for the little guy. Not at all. One of the things you'll find in my book, by the way, mm-hmm. America Redemption Story, is how it feels to live in poverty, to be hopeless, and then to meet a small business owner, Mm -hmm. John Moniz, a Chick-fil-A operator, Mm -hmm. who teaches me me that I could think my way out of poverty, who teaches me that having a job is a good thing, but creating jobs is a better thing. Mm -hmm. This administration and this current economy is uh, destroying jobs by raising taxes. It's so true. Hope seeps out when you look around and no one's working. The muscle of work is atrophying under this administration. That's another great point. And they're putting pressure pressure on the greatest economy because they refuse to let American production of energy become a reality. And this environmentally friendly bill mm-hmm. is not friendly to everyday Americans. Yep. Spot on. And, and and again, these are not policies everyday Americans support, which is why not they had all. the Trojan horse at under inflation reduction. Dude, Tom Brady has done more to reduce inflation <laughs> during his time as an NFL quarterback. I love it. Well, then the, go ahead. I'm yeah, sorry. No, Tom Brady and Bernie Sanders would both agree on this topic. Because <laughs> <laughs> even Bernie admitted <laughs> exactly. it doesn't reduce inflation. No. It's such a racket. What well, the let me, heck? Let me talk to you about your book really Certainly. quick. It is called America, A Redemption Story, Choosing Hope and Creating Unity. One of the things you and I have talked about at great length on this show is what we call American privilege. Absolutely. Okay, there's a lot of emphasis placed on race and identity in the modern Democratic Party. Yes. But in becoming who you are, you were willing to you know, shove that to the side and focus on your unique American privilege, which was the opportunity to work hard and become Tim Scott. Um, do you feel like they're just selling victimhood because victimhood's an easier way for them to get votes? Like, what is the motivation there? Well, uh, absolutely. They, uh, they, they misunderstand the American people. Mm-hmm. And one of the best stories in the book, America, a redemption story, is my grandfather telling me, no matter what your circumstances are, you're never a victim. Mm-hmm. You can be a victim or you can be victorious. You cannot be both. Mm-hmm. And the beauty of America, and frankly, we are living in the most privileged society it's ever. Not even, close. Not even close. And that's why we should embrace our common citizenship as Americans. We should not divide ourselves in tribes like the Democrats do. Mm-hmm. We are one American family. And reading my book, you'll understand why I believe that fervently with all of my being. I've been blessed by amazing people who happen to be white. Mm-hmm. These, the smile that people talk about sometimes, it was created by a guy named Dr. Monty S. Harrington. I had two front teeth that didn't like each other. <laughs> I, I had buck teeth. And I walked into his orthodontist office and he says, you know what? I can help you. And he was not lying. <laughs> well, you, did you know your, your front teeth were bad when the local pervert was trying to bribe you with carrots? Why? Well, not, not even candy. He's like, here's some carrots. Go ahead. I knew without any question that I had a problem uh-huh. and an American fixed it. Wow. And my small business owner, John Monisa, I talk about all the time, my mentor, he saw something in me that I could not see in myself. He happened to be white. Mm-hmm. Ed Bryant, another guy who helped me a lot, happened to be black. So what happens in real America mm-hmm. Good people of good conscience come together to help each other out. It's not a black thing or a white thing. It's an American thing. It's our story. Mm -hmm. And if we read about our story, Mm -hmm. we'll believe in each other more. If we listen to the Democrats, we'll believe in each other less. That's so true. It's so simple. No, it's so true. We're talking to Senator Tim Scott, the book America, A Redemption Story. It's funny because they really are in a position where they're asking people to put party over country. Absolutely. They're the reason we're not playing team ball. Yes. Because, I mean, you have spoken at length on this show about the evolution of the Southern heart and Absolutely. how it was only possible to become who you are because this imperfect society made a heck of a whole lot of progress. You never come on and say we're perfect. You just say, look at how far we've moved the ball down the field. But they don't want to give us credit for that. They want us to still be backed up against our own end zone. Well, listen, they're they're driving their cars by looking at the rearview mirror. Yeah. We're driving our cars by looking at that massive windshield that you can't miss. <laughs> Unless you are so narrow minded that your entire view of the future is simply the view of the past. You cannot find a better future than the American future when we're looking at the collective windshield. 
when we were looking collectively at the windshield, we were seeing opportunities. We saw how to do it, actually, yeah. and we did it. Mm-hmm. From 2016 to 2020, we lowered unemployment to the lowest level for African Americans, for Hispanics, a 70-year low for, for women. When you look at the windshield of American opportunity, you see opportunity zones that brought in more money in one year into the poorest communities from the private sector than we've ever seen in the country, $29 billion. Those are conservative principles, mm-hmm. conservative policies passed by a majority of Republicans. Think about that. And we never have that conversation because I just I, I think substance is an elusive thing in today's politics. People would rather, you know, descend into character assassination. I think that's a lot of today's politics. It's become an exercise in defining your opponent yes. instead of defining a solution. Well, division is easier to sell. Yeah. But hope is more eternal. Great point. So let me ask you this, Tim Scott. The book is America, a Redemption Story. You speak about great things like redemption throughout the book, but there's such an optimistic tone in everything you do. Yes. Okay, in the last minute I have here with you today, I'm trying to make peace with what's more shocking, that you're this optimistic spending as much time in Washington as you do, or that you're this optimistic being a Cowboys fan for as long as you have. <laughs> what do you a, think's the greater anomaly? That's a low blow, but the answer is simple. There, 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 there is, in fact, a swamp. Uh And it's in Washington. (laughs) It does take a lot of optimism to survive the swamp. Mm -hmm. But 25 years later, without a a Super Super Bowl, Bowl, (laughs) well, it's a statistical tie. If it makes you feel any better, the last time the Jets won, Neil Armstrong hadn't even stepped on the moon yet. So, Jimmy, did you say the Jets, do they play football? (laughs) Hey, I'm I'm not going to have you insult our only local college team. You can't treat us like that. The Jets are like Spirit Airlines Jets. These aren't the best Jets, is is all I'm going to say. Well, they need a merger with the Giants then. (laughs) Maybe we'll do something like that. I love it. Uh, The book is called America, A Redemption Story, Choosing Hope, Creating Unity. I love the book. You know, I love everything about you. we got to do it again soon, man. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you for allowing me to come into studio live and in person. (laughs) It It was a big deal. This was our sleepless in Seattle. We finally got to meet <laughs> after all those phone calls and you've got mails. It wasn't quite the roof of the Empire State Building. That's we'll have to settle for Fox News. God bless. Best of luck to you, Thanks, brother. Sir. There he goes, the great Tim Scott.